Hello, I'm Greg with Prowler Rights. Today we're going to talk about another aspect that affects 22 long rifle that you'll be able to see at very close distance that with a centerfire rifle may be more difficult to see. And that is aerodynamic jump. If you're unfamiliar with aerodynamic jump, it is an effect that causes a spun stabilized projectile to rise or fall depending on the direction that the wind is pushing it. I won't bore you with all the details in this video. Everybody's got Google search in front of them. You can go look up aerodynamic jump. Uh, there's a lot of very good information put out on this topic by Applied Ballistics. So I encourage you to go have a look at that. But the long and short of it is, is it means that if you're shooting in a crosswind condition, so a 3 o'clock or a 9 o'clock, the direction that that wind is coming from in relation to the twist of your barrel will determine whether that round will rise or fall. Now this is something that you can see very, very easily at 50 yards with a 22 long rifle. So today I went out and set this up. It's blowing pretty good out here today. Anywhere from 10 to 20 miles an hour, 22, maybe 20, 23, 24 miles an hour on the top side. So what I did is I set up in a direct full value situation where I had a nine o'clock wind and, and I set my target at 50 yards I shot two five shot groups and then I switched the target and I put the target where I was laying and I went and laid where the target was sitting. And I did this to demonstrate to you just how much aerodynamic jump is going to affect a 22 long rifle at close distances. If you're wanting to go out there and win some of these competitions that you're entering with your 22s, this is the thing that you're going to need to know. Uh, this effect is something that centerfire shooters in PRS and NRL have been aware of for quite a long time. And uh, if you're not accounting for it past five, six, seven hundred yards, depending on what you're shooting, uh, you're probably going to notice things not going exactly to plan. So I did this test to demonstrate just how, uh, how much the aerodynamic jump is going to affect a 22 long rifle at closer distances. And of course that will be amplified at further distances. So up on the screen, you're seeing a group, uh, two five shot groups that were fired from a nine o'clock wind. Now for these, I just held center bull and rocked the rounds off as quickly as I could get them out of the rifle. And I was basically just shooting, shooting for that specific condition. And once I, once I had it, I just started launching. Now I didn't account for anything. I was just holding center bull, trying to get some nice small groups to print. So as you can see, this left to right wind, okay, the nine o'clock wind, is causing those rounds to fall. Now I have fired this rifle a lot in the last few weeks. I, I knew through firing it in other completely windless conditions um, that the the rifle was zeroed perfectly and everything was as it should be. So what you're seeing is the drift of the wind pulling the rounds off to the to the right but what you're also seeing is a vertical element. Now this is a right twist rifle as is most of the rifles that you're going to be shooting. They are right twist, most of them. Unless otherwise specified, most of the rifling we're shooting in this country is going to be right twist. So with a right twist, that projectile spinning to the right, it's going to, the wind is going to push it down. You're going to have a, a, a general movement downward as that wind is coming left to right, it's kind of accelerating its downward drop. Uh, so a nine o'clock wind, you're, you're going to need to tack on a little bit of elevation there. And uh, a good rule of thumb is about for every 10 miles an hour of wind, you're gonna wanna adjust about a 10th of a mil. And that's just a basic rule of thumb. Obviously you can run some ballistic calculators. Uh, if you're running applied ballistics on your phone, that's something you can very easily calculate yourself. Go and throw in a, a 10 mile an hour, nine o'clock condition and look at your come ups and then change nothing else and switch that over to a three o'clock, 10 mile per hour condition. And, and you'll see very plainly that the calculators that are calculating for aerodynamic jump will account for it and it's fairly accurate with these 22s. So on your screen now, you can see the groups that I fired uh, two five-shot groups that I fired 
from a three o'clock wind. So I picked up and went to the other side and swapped my position with the target. So I had the exact same terrain in between me and the target and the as close to the same wind condition as I could. So I took out the Kestrel and was measuring the wind and everything when I did the first test. So on the second test, I wanted to demonstrate only the vertical. So in that one, I was doing my level best to hold what I thought the wind condition was at the time. But I didn't account for vertical. So if you wanted to stay center bull, you'd have to account for both your horizontal and your vertical deflection. Now look at this, the vertical spread in these groups. Horizontally, I did pretty good staying on top of the wind. You can see it was starting to get me a little bit. There's uh, a little bit of a slant in those groups. But what I did was I fired those rounds apart from each other throughout the, the wind valley and peak. So I, I started shooting when I had a maybe 10 mile an hour wind and I fired those groups one round at a time as the wind was building, trying my level best to maintain my point of aim and to hold as much of the horizontal wind as I could, but I wanted to demonstrate the difference between a 10 mile an hour wind and a 20 mile an hour wind in the vertical. So you can see both those groups, they've got a pretty long vertical to them. And uh, granted, it's, it's difficult to shoot that precisely. You'd basically need to be able to hold right on a bullet hole every time. And if you have any experience with precise rimfire, you know that that can be quite difficult. <laughs> Uh, especially when the wind is slamming on you. So I did the best I could to demonstrate the effect here, but one thing you'll notice is that in the 3 o'clock wind, every single one of the rounds is high. In the 9 o'clock wind, every single one of the rounds is low. So the effect is real, folks, and it's going to show up at significantly closer ranges with a 22 than it will just about anything else.